Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. General Dunford and I just returned from the White House, where we met with the President and his national security team to discuss options to deter Iran's continued aggressive behavior. As we have seen, the Iranian regime is waging a deliberate campaign to destabilize the Middle East and impose costs on the international economy. In recent months, Iran has increased its military activity through direct attacks and support to its proxies in the region. In the Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman, which are vital waterways for global commerce, Iran has threatened the safe passage of ships by attacking commercial vessels and illegally seizing a British oil tanker. In Yemen, Iran is perpetuating war by providing sustained financial support and advanced weapons to the Houthi insurgency. And on June 20th, Iran shot down a United States unmanned aircraft that was flying over international waters. Despite repeated calls from President Trump to begin diplomatic talks, Iranian aggression continues to increase. In the face of this sustained malign behavior, the United States and other countries have demonstrated great restraint in hopes that Iranian leadership would choose peace and reverse Iran's steep decline into isolation and economic collapse. But the attack on September 14th against Saudi Arabian oil facilities represents a dramatic escalation of Iranian aggression. It is clear, based on detailed exploitation conducted by Saudi, United States, and other international investigative teams, that the weapons used in the attack were Iranian-produced and were not launched from Yemen, as was initially claimed. All indications are that Iran was responsible for the attack. The United States has a responsibility to protect our citizens and our interests in the region. And the international community has a responsibility to protect the global of the global economy and international rules and norms. All of this is threatened by Iran's significant escalation of violence. This week, I have been in dialogue with the Saudi Defense Minister and other partners about this latest attack. To prevent further escalation, Saudi Arabia requested international support to help protect the kingdom's critical infrastructure. The United Arab Emirates has also requested assistance. In response to the kingdom's request, the President has approved the deployment of U.S. forces, which will be defensive in nature and primarily focused on air and missile defense. We will also work to accelerate the delivery of military equipment to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the UAE to enhance their ability to defend themselves. The purpose of the additional defensive support we will provide is as follows. First, to send a clear message that the United States supports our partners in the region. Second to ensure the free flow of resources necessary to support the global economy. And third, to demonstrate our commitment to upholding the international rules-based order that we have long called on Iran to obey. As the President has made clear, the United States does not seek conflict with Iran. That said, we have many other military options available should they be necessary. We urge the Iranian leadership to cease their destructive and destabilizing activities and to move forward on a peaceful, diplomatic path. Mr. Secretary, thank you. You said air and missile defenses primarily. Could you be a little more specific about, are you talking about Patriot missiles or you, and what, what 